This week on Ancient Top 10, the world's first robot 2,000 years ago. There was actually a robot that existed in ancient Greece. An incredible ancient death ray. This really sounds like something from the space age. Genius that could make water defy gravity. We wouldn't see anything like this until the 19th century. They were so far ahead of their time. And full steam ahead, it's ancient steam power. Technology is so advanced it boggles the mind. This is from ancient times. Where will they be ranked on the only top 10 show, thousands of years in the making? Western civilization began in ancient Greece. It was home to the great philosophers. And it was the first civilization to introduce voting, giving birth to democracy. But the Greeks were also brilliant inventors. The Greeks are definitely the fathers of modern democracy, but what you might not know is that that reasoning ability put them thousands of years ahead of everybody else regarding their inventions and technology, and that changed the world. The ancient Greeks were ancient geeks, and they made all kinds of high-tech advances that weren't then reinvented until modern times. This week's Ancient Top 10. Ancient Greek Tech. The most sophisticated Greek gadgets ranked according to how advanced they were. And coming in at number 10, not exactly the holiest of holies, but it might be the world's first vending machine. It's incredible to think that the Greeks had something as modern as vending machines, but it's true, they did, and we're talking 2,000 years ago. Today, vending machines are everywhere. There are currently more vending machines in Japan than there are people in New Zealand. But amazingly, this seemingly modern device was first created by an ancient Greek genius, and it was in the most unlikely of places, a temple. In ancient times, temples had to make money, so they had to come up with ingenious ways to separate people from their cash. Competing temples would do everything they could to try and draw in the crowds and take their money. And one of the best ways to do this was to showcase impressive spectacles and magical devices so that it seemed like the gods favored your temple the most. The priests paid inventors to make magical devices for them. And one of the best inventors was Heron of Alexandria. The city of Alexandria in Egypt was at the time ruled over by Greeks and had become the center of their commercial and scientific world. Alexandria at the time was this hotbed of learning and ideas. A teacher named Heron worked there teaching physics and mathematics, and he had a very special skill set as an inventor, which was highly in demand at the time, and he was always willing to make a little bit on the side. Heron came up with something so modern, it had to be in our top 10 list, the vending machine. Popped in a coin, and out came in return a cup of holy water. How was this ancient marvel possible? Someone would put a coin inside the slot, the coin would fall onto a plate, and the weight of the coin on the plate would open a valve. As the plate tipped, the coin would slide off of it, closing the valve again. This meant that a precise amount of holy water could be dispensed each time. As an inventor, there's nothing more thrilling than seeing someone's reaction to one of your creations. But can you imagine back in the time of the ancient Greeks going to a temple, already being in awe of all the architecture there, and then seeing something like a vending machine? They must have thought it was the work of the gods. This is a vending machine, but all the way back in the first century AD, and the principle is still the same as we use today. Heron made all kinds of automatic inventions, such as a mechanical archer who could shoot his arrow at a miniature dragon. He made model dancers dancing around a fire. And he made a brass horse that appeared to actually drink water. 
All this was done with air, water, and complicated levers and valves. But to amazed onlookers, it was all magic. And there was no greater magic than the vending machine. A refreshing twist on technology. It was the grandfather of today's vending machines, what many people would think of as a 20th century invention. But next in our countdown is history's first power lifter, giving one man the strength of hundreds. At number nine, the block and tackle. The block and tackle may not be the most glamorous invention on this list, but you can't underestimate the impact that this small device had on the world. The block and tackle was so advanced that the famous astronomer Galileo called its inventor Archimedes superhuman. He has gone down in history as one of the greatest minds of all time. Genius is rather an overused term, but there is no doubt that Archimedes was a genius. He was a mathematician, he was a scientist, he was an inventor, he was a creator, and he didn't just change the ancient world, he changed ours too. Most people know Archimedes as the man who jumped up naked out of the bath shouting Eureka after he discovered the laws of buoyancy, when in reality he was actually a brilliant scientist, and one of his most famous inventions is known as the block and tackle. Before the block and tackle of Archimedes, lifting heavy weights depended on pure muscle power. To lift one ton would take 40 men. Archimedes knew that using a pulley made it much easier to lift a heavy weight. But he then worked out that using two joined together made it twice as easy. The block and tackle, it's an amazing invention. It's a series of pulleys that allows someone to lift far more than they would be able to normally, and it's still in use today. The weight becomes divided between the number of ropes. The more pulleys in the series, the heavier the weight that can be lifted. Using the block and tackle, a simple but ingenious device, one man can actually lift a ton in weight. This experiment shows that one man can lift a family car with just four pulleys linked together. The story goes that this invention was so revolutionary, Archimedes used the block and tackle to single-handedly pull a whole ship to the shore. There's no proof to that story, but looking at the simple mechanics, in theory, it could be true. What is certain is that this revolutionary invention had captured men's imaginations. A lever uses a similar principle. The longer the lever, the less force is needed. In fact, Archimedes said that with a lever long enough, one man could lift the weight of the Earth. Since its invention over 2,000 years ago, the block and tackle has been in use continually. The critical thing to remember about the invention of block and tackle is that it allowed one machine to do the work of 100 men. And this has a profound impact on the story of civilization. It allows us as humans to create whole new worlds. Archimedes' invention reached into the future and pulled the ancient world forward. But now, spinning in at number eight, a totally revolutionary gadget. It's the gimbal, the ancient ancestor of the modern-day gyroscope. In the third century BC, a genius inventor was living in the Greek city of Byzantium. He was called Philon, or Philo Mechanicus, because when it came to mechanics, he was centuries ahead of his time. Philon invented advanced pieces of technology, such as an automatic mechanical crossbow, he was the first person in history to accurately describe the scientific principles behind a water mill. He also worked out how to project huge missiles from a catapult. But his most revolutionary invention? An ink pot. 
believe it or not, the technology behind Phelon's ink pot keeps us safe in the skies today. How? Welcome back to Ancient Top 10 Greek Tech. Incredible ancient Greek technology, ranked by experts according to how advanced they were. We're at number eight, and it's a revolutionary ink pot invented by Philon of Byzantium. Philon taught at the famous library in Alexandria in Egypt, which was the center of learning in the ancient world. It was here where he invented this extraordinary gadget. It was a neat little party trick, a device that stays level whichever way you turn it. It's now known as a gimbal. The gimbal was first invented to stabilize an ink pot, so whichever way around it was twisted, the ink would never spill out. It's really simple, really effective design. The ink pot had eight holes in eight sides, and you could dip your quill in any of them. Within the device was super advanced technology, a series of suspended rings attached to each other, but free to rotate. Gravity held the ink bowl level, so any way you turned it, the ink bowl was facing upwards. Phelon was a genius inventor. His eight-sided ink pot was the precursor to the modern day gimbal. The gimbal is still being used today in very high-tech pieces of kit, which just goes to show how far in advance of its time it really was. A modern-day ship's compass still uses the principles behind Phelon's ancient creation. And this invention is still in use in the skies all over the world. It's the basis of an airplane's gyroscope, which shows a level horizon to the pilot. Whichever way the plane turns, the gyroscope keeps level. At night or in poor visibility, it's the most important instrument in the cockpit. And NASA's most advanced spacecraft all used this technology in much the same way. Amazingly, this technology helped to put a man on the moon. What an amazing invention. Phelon's ink pot is a high-flying marvel. But the next invention on our list is also in use today all across the globe. It's gravity-defying ancient genius. Coming in at number seven, it's that Eureka man again. Archimedes. It's the Archimedes screw. The Archimedes screw allows people to draw water uphill, and this is over 2,000 years ago. It's incredible. In ancient times, agriculture, industry, and the growth of towns and cities all depended on controlling the flow of water. It was crucial. Great efforts were taken to divert rivers, build dams and canals, and to lift water from one level to another. So when Archimedes invented a way of making water flow uphill, it was truly transforming. The Archimedes screw was a tube with a helicoid or screw in the center. When hand cranked or turned by some sort of wind power, this draws water up from the bottom, through the screw, and out through the other side. This was a revolutionary invention. For the ancients, water flowing uphill was a wonder to behold. It seemed to go against all the laws of nature. But this was no party trick. This simple invention had huge implications. And because of its simplicity, it could be applied to many different uses. The Archimedes screw is an incredible innovation. It's been used on everything from irrigation to bilge pumps on ships. Bilge pumps are used to pump water out of the hold of a ship. They're crucial for long voyages. Christopher Columbus couldn't have sailed the Atlantic if his ships hadn't been fitted with bilge pumps. And there's even evidence that the Archimedes screw was used on board the biggest ship of ancient Greece, the Syracusia. It was the world's first cruise ship. It was the most luxurious passenger ship that had ever been built. It was filled with paintings and statues, bronze bathtubs, even irrigated flower beds. And who was it designed by? Of course, Archimedes. 
and it might well have been kept afloat by an Archimedes screw. It's possible that Archimedes invented his famous screw as a fundamental solution to pumping water out of the Syracusia. It's amazing that this mega ship could have been powered by one man using the bilge pump to keep this boat afloat. With bilge pumps, ships could travel further and the ancient world expanded. Archimedes screws were also used in ancient mines to draw water to the surface to stop the mines from flooding. There's an example here, the ancient Roman mine at Rio Tinto in the south of Spain. Here they built incredible underground water wheels to lift flood water from one level to another. And at the top, in the last part of the process, they used an Archimedes screw to get the water to the surface. We still use the Archimedes screw today. As well as being used to move water uphill, it's also used in the hydroelectric industry, where the design is reversed. Water flows downwards through the screw, turning it and generating electricity. And there's a royal twist to the story. This is Windsor Castle in England. It's one of the main residences of the Queen of England, and most of the power of the castle comes from here, the River Thames, thanks to these inverted Archimedes screws. And it's been used on a much, much larger scale too. A great deal of the Netherlands was previously below sea level and therefore flooded. How did Holland reclaim all that land from the sea? They used the Archimedes screw. This thing built a country. And on a much, much smaller scale. No pulse, no problem. The Archimedes screw or screw pump is used today in modern medicine to maintain steady blood flow in patients with acute heart failure. How amazing is that? None of this would have been possible without Archimedes. What a genius. He was one Greek who certainly had his head screwed on. Welcome back to our top 10 ancient Greek tech. And at number six in our list of technological wizardry is something that has saved entire cities from the flames. The water pump. Even just 200 years ago, we were putting out fires by passing buckets of water down the line. But the ancient Greeks knew a thing or two. They had their own equivalent of the modern day fire extinguisher thousands of years ago. Remarkably, the power behind the pump was compressed air. In the modern world, compressed air is used all around us. It's in the tires of our cars. And it's what drives many modern day power tools. Compressed air power tools used to change the tires on racing cars revolve at between 10 and 15,000 RPM. This is super high-tech modern technology. But as incredible as it may seem, there is nothing modern about pneumatics. The ancients were there first. The father of pneumatics, Tisibius, an extraordinary Greek inventor from the third century BC and a contemporary of Philon at the library in Alexandria. Tosibius was a genius. He was the first one to realize that air was actually a substance. So he's rightly known as the father of pneumatics. Tosibius was the son of a barber and one of his first inventions was a mirror that could be raised up and down to help with shaving. The mirror had a lead counterweight and Tosibius noticed the noise of air as it escaped back into the casing around the lead weight. Listening to this noise of escaping air, he had the remarkable revelation that air had mass and pressure. Tosibius was a pioneer. He was the first person to realize that air could be compressed, and he really put that into action. To say this was a revolution is an understatement. The result was the world's first water pump. A directed jet of water was something new and amazing. There had never been anything like this anywhere before, and it was portable. This was the world's first fire engine. It was rushed around the ancient city of Alexandria over 2,000 years ago. But how did it work? 
As you press down the handle of the water pump, compressed air is forced onto the surface of the water, which drives the water through a series of pipes and out through the nozzle at high speed. There are two pistons and a central chamber. Valves stop the water flowing back out of the chamber. When one piston is drawing water in, the other is pushing water out through the nozzle. You could put it on a cart and take it absolutely anywhere as long as there was standing water. A portable water pump such as this wasn't then reinvented for 1,500 years. The ancients had super advanced engineering that wouldn't be out of place in our modern world. Up next is another invention of Tisibius that wouldn't be bettered for 1,800 years. It was the most accurate clock of the ancient world and it was powered entirely by water, centuries ahead of its time, at number five. The water clock. Astonishingly, this clock, made over 2,000 years ago, runs continuously, 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year, and not a battery in sight. In the modern world, Telling the time is taken for granted. We live our lives by it. But time was important to the ancients, too. In the courts of ancient Greece, for example, each witness was given a set amount of time to speak. A set length of time could be measured by the time it took for water to run out of a bucket. It's a fixed duration that's always the same. But this couldn't tell the time. It was more like an egg timer. Then came Tisibius. He created a water clock so accurate that it could actually tell the time. He adapted an existing Greek water clock to make something truly extraordinary. Tisibius's genius is that he refines it using hydraulics so that this becomes an incredibly accurate timekeeping machine. And his prototype would be in use for close on a thousand years. This is an accurate working model of his clock. It all works by flowing water. Water goes in one end, and at the other end, a marker slowly rises, showing the time. Tisibius knew that to give an accurate measurement of time passing, he needed a continuous flow of water. But water flows out of a container quicker and quicker as the height of the water goes down. So he came up with the great idea of having two water chambers, and the first is always full. There's a continuous flow of water into it, with an overflow pipe at the top. Then this feeds into a second chamber. The water in the second chamber then rises at a steady rate, and time can be measured accurately for the duration of that rise. Tisibius fitted a siphon to his water clock this is the first recorded incidence we have of that happening. And it meant that the clock could empty and then refill itself automatically. So basically, he's inventing a kind of intelligent machine. A siphon allows water to flow upward, so long as its final destination is at a lower level. It was super advanced hydraulics. And it meant that the clock ran continuously, time after time. But even that wasn't enough for Tisibius. Sunlight was important to the ancients. As the hours of sunlight changes between the seasons, it would be ideal for the ancients to know exactly how many hours of sunlight particular days would have. Amazingly, Tisibius's water clock could tell that too. Tisibius's water clock was so precise that it adjusted itself automatically to changes in seasonal daylight hours, which is absolutely incredible. By a complicated series of cogs, the rising water of the clock raised an arrow on a marker, which had hour lines that grew further, then closer apart. And for nearly 2,000 years, it was the most accurate clock in the world. We're over halfway in our ancient top 10 countdown of the most advanced ancient Greek technology.
Welcome back to Ancient Top 10 Greek Tech, our countdown of the most advanced ancient Greek technology. Astonishing machines and gadgets and colossal engineering advances. At number 10, as if by magic, an ancient vending machine. Number nine was the block and tackle doing the heavy lifting. Number eight was the technological marvel, the gimbal. And number seven, still in use today, the Archimedes screw. At number six was the water pump. And clocking in at number five, the water clock. Next in our countdown is an invention more advanced than any we've seen so far. And it's something truly deadly. Coming in at number four, it's the death ray. Beams of light shooting down and burning ships. This really sounds like something from the space age, but this was an ancient super weapon. In the third century BC, the might of the ancient Greeks was being challenged by a new up and coming power in the Mediterranean, Rome. Syracuse, the Greek colony on Sicily was coming under attack. But Syracuse was the home of Archimedes. Up until now, Greeks had really controlled the world, but the Romans are new big players on the block, and Archimedes has to come up with a big invention to try to match their might. Archimedes had already invented some devastating war machines. He was known as the great geometer, the master, the wise one, and he came up with all sorts of amazing inventions such as a cannon powered by steam and a claw that could rip enemy ships from the sea. We're told by the writers of the day that the Romans were reduced almost to despair by Archimedes' inventions. But Archimedes' best and most incredible weapon was something from science fiction. It seems that Archimedes invented some kind of deadly weapon of terror using just the power of sunlight. Today, the US Navy has laser weapon systems. They're called directed energy weapons. But Archimedes was there first by over 2,000 years. The story goes that Archimedes was able to burn a fleet of Roman ships using only the power of the sun and nothing more than mirrors. We're told that Archimedes used the power of the sun and reflected it back onto the Roman boats, which then caught fire, so the whole fleet was in flames. There is written evidence that there was such a weapon, a solar-powered death ray. Ancient sources have claimed that the ancient lighthouse at Alexandria, the mighty Pharos, also used mirrors to make a death ray. This was to protect its harbor from enemy ships. One lens or mirror at the top revolved to catch the sunlight, which was reflected down to a second mirror. This could be turned as well to aim a devastating beam of light. It may have been inspired by the deadly weapon of Archimedes. This Renaissance painting shows the death ray at Syracuse as one giant mirror. But there is another theory. In Syracuse at that time, there were plenty of smaller mirrors on hand. The defending soldiers had highly polished shields of copper or bronze that were also concave. And in theory, Archimedes could have used these to reflect the sun's rays. This sounds completely fanciful, but the Mediterranean sun is very, very strong. So it's not beyond the realms of reality. How many bronze shields would it take to burn one Roman ship? We now know the answer. The ignition point of wood is over 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Modern calculations show that you'd need 200 to 300 shields working together to set a ship ablaze. With an army of over 20,000 soldiers, Syracuse would easily have had that many shields. We don't know whether Archimedes' death ray was ever actually used, but it is a really clever psychological weapon. 
If you can harness the power of the sun, you can do extraordinary damage. And even reflecting from bronze shields onto ships would have been incredibly uncomfortable for those Roman soldiers. They'd have had retina burn, and it would have seemed as though the island of Sicily was ablaze. And it certainly sounds like something out of a science fiction movie, but it is a quite extraordinarily brilliant idea. We're not sure exactly how he made this super weapon, but we can be sure it was thousands of years ahead of its time. No one else had any kind of laser or death ray to burn ships. This was truly spectacular, ancient technology. Other Greek inventions went on to do amazing things with air and water but this solar-powered death ray was manipulating light. 20th century technology in ancient times. Still to come, could something as advanced as robotics possibly have been invented thousands of years ago? This is Ancient Top 10's countdown of the most advanced technology from ancient Greece. We've now reached the top three, and it's time to brace yourself for something mind-blowing. Ancient robotics. Robotics sounds so modern. It used to be science fiction. It's incredible to think that robots are nothing new. In fact, they're ancient. The father of robotics is not who you think it is. It's not actually a modern day scientist, but in fact, it's an ancient Greek over 2,000 years ago. It was that mechanical genius, Philon of Byzantium. As well as being the inventor of the gimbal, he is the father of robotics. Philon taught himself all about hydraulics and compressed air by studying the inventions of Tisibius, such as the water pump and the water clock. But then he took things one stage further. He was the first man in history to make a robot. Believe it or not, there was actually a robot that existed in ancient Greece. It was built to look like a serving maid, and it performed a very simple human task. This ancient robot could pour a glass of wine, astonishing guests at an ancient dinner party. Imagine walking into a lavish dinner party and being told to place your cup in the hand of an odd-looking statue. Then the statue would be pouring out and filling your cup, and that to me is just absolutely mind-blowing. A humanoid figure built to perform a task automatically, well, that in itself is the definition of a robot. It was all done by a series of valves and changing air pressure inside, set in motion by movement of the cup as it filled with wine. The weight of that cup would lower the hand, setting off a series of complex mechanics within the body. And then this would pour out equal measures of water and wine, which is exactly how the Greeks like to drink it. The movement of the arm led to the release of the wine. And then when the goblet reaches an exact weight, the wine valve closed and the water valve opened. I'd love to go back in time and be poured a goblet of wine by Philon's robot. However amazed those guests would have been, they'd have had no idea just how much they were looking into the future. Most of Philon's work has been lost to history. Tragically, a fire started in the first century BC burnt much of the library of Alexandria. We can only imagine what super advanced technological insights it might have contained. We're into the top two of our countdown of the most advanced ancient Greek technology. We've seen all manner of machines that would amaze us if we came across them today. However, our number two is something we're all familiar with. Automatic doors. When automatic doors were first introduced in the 20th century, it was like magic. People were left wondering how on earth did they work? It was something from science fiction. Automatic doors were the future, but the unbelievable truth is that yet again, ancient Greek technology was there first. This is Ephesus, 
in modern-day Turkey. It was home to an ancient Greek temple that had huge doors that opened automatically. These are the indentations in the ground rock where they opened. Of course, behind the magic of the doors is ancient technology, a technology so advanced that it boggles the mind this is from ancient times. This was technology masquerading as divine magic. It was the work of the same genius behind the vending machine, Heron of Alexandria, the master of temple wizardry. How did they work? The temple priest lit a fire. The fire heated a tank of air underneath. The expanding hot air pushed through into a second tank of water, forcing the water through a pipe into a bucket. Heron may well have been the first to understand that heating air caused it to expand. The weight of the water gradually lowered the bucket, which was attached by ropes and pulleys to the doors. The doors then automatically opened. It was as if the gods were opening them, calling the people in. Giant, solid, automatic doors from 2,000 years ago. It's mind-blowing stuff, but it's true. Heron the Greek, Heron the magician. When the fire was extinguished, the air beneath would cool, drawing the water back the way it had come, and the doors would magically close again. It's ancient technology. But it's so far advanced, it's incredible to think that it's almost 2,000 years old. We've had hydraulics, pneumatics, robotics, incredible high-tech inventions from ancient Greece. But number one is still to come. 2,000 years ahead of its time, it held within it the power to change the course of history. And it will make your mind spin. Welcome back to the finale of our Top 10 Ancient Countdown. We've reached the very top in our list of amazing ancient Greek tech. At number 10, we saw an ancient vending machine. Number 9, the transforming block and tackle. Number 8 was the ahead-of-its-time gimbal. And number 7, the groundbreaking Archimedes screw. At number six was the firefighting water pump. And at number five, the Big Ben of the ancient world, the water clock. Number four was the space age death ray. And at number three, unbelievably, ancient robotics. Number two, technological wizardry, the first automatic doors. So what can possibly be our number one? What have our experts and historians chosen as the ancient Greek technology that can beat all else? Amazingly, the ancient world had its very own steam engine. The elipile, also known as the steam ball. It's a rotating copper ball, but it rotates at 1,500 RPM. That's three times the speed of helicopter blades. This is an elipile. It means ball of wind in Greek. Why it was invented is still a mystery. But it is the greatest, most incredible example of all ancient technology. It is the world's first steam engine. The elipile was the fastest rotating object in the ancient world, powered by steam. Because this technology wouldn't be rediscovered for another 2,000 years, the steam ball has got to be our number one pick. The fact that the ancients had this form of power, this steam power, it, it boggles the mind. We wouldn't see anything like this until the 19th century. They were so far ahead of their time, centuries ahead of their time. The elipile was made by the genius behind the vending machine and the automatic doors, Heron of Alexandria. He was the master of miraculous machines that pushed technology to the limits. 
It's possible that this was invented as a party trick or a device to show off Heron's genius to potential patrons. For the automatic doors, Heron used expanding hot air as a source of power. But he realized that the steam he could see when boiling water must be a substance too, and potentially a hugely powerful one. This was remarkable insight, a scientific eureka moment that didn't occur to anyone else until the 18th century. Heron's design was ingenious. He made an airtight cauldron and filled it with water. Two pipes connected the cauldron to a sealed ball that was free to spin under its own steam. As the water's heated, it creates steam, and that steam escapes through two nozzles that are facing in different directions, forcing the ball around at incredible speed. A forward force generated by a concentrated spurt in the opposite direction. Now, that's the same principle behind jet propulsion. The potential force of that spin, if put into some useful machinery, well, it could have changed history. Today, high-pressure steam is used in the most advanced machines. And Heron was there first. This is actually the technology that powered the Industrial Revolution. And can you imagine where we would be today if the Greeks had realized what kind of power they held in their hands? We are left wondering, what if future generations had gone on to develop this super advanced technology? Where would we be today? So much of our modern world has been influenced by the ingenuity of the ancient Greeks. Incredible scientific insights, astonishing inventions. The technology of ancient Greece was so advanced, it wouldn't be matched for centuries to come. Over 2,000 years later, it's a wealth of technological know-how that we are still rediscovering. <laughs>